Hello and welcome to the fourth session of the Public GIS Viewer Introductory Training. Uh, today we're going to go over the Analyze and Report tab. Some cool tools that we've included, one that you may be familiar with that's been a little bit um, improved, and then a crime reporting tool that we've created. So from the initial screen, we would just go to the Analyze and Report tab. Um, so the first tool that we'll go over is the property report tool, which is similar to the property report that exists in the current or old viewer, if you will. So I can zoom into an area or let's say I wanted to find a specific address and do a report on that. I can use my find address tool. I can zoom into that parcel, go to my Analyze and Report tab. I'm going to close that little information balloon. I'm going to click on the property report, and as you can see, there's a progress indicator that starts to run at the bottom. And basically what is happening right now is the application is gathering the various data sources that are contained within the report. There's several different layers that this report drills down on and returns information from including the parcel um, neighborhood associations a variety of different layers so once the progress bar is gone you can see over in the table of contents window it's in the property report frame click on a parcel to generate a report so I'm zoomed to a parcel that I want to get information about. I click once and you can see my progress bar reappears. And as long as that's present, that means that the application is doing something, basic, doing some calculations. Once it finishes, it's going to highlight the parcel and kind of center it in the map frame. And then it's going to start generating the report. It takes a few minutes few seconds anyways to gather all the different data sources and formulate the report put it in the correct format once it's complete you can click on the link below to open the report so I just click on that and the report opens in a new window so I can kind of maximize that and as you can see it's pretty similar to the report that we had we've just added a few different additional um, data components but you get general parcel information, you get zoning information, you get jurisdiction information, in terms of the school district that it's in, when it was annexed, the council district that it's in, if there's a <clears throat> elementary school, what the nearest one is, uh, what the nearest uh, middle school is, what the nearest high school is, as well as neighborhood information. If there's an existing neighborhood association or a homeowners association, that'll be listed here. Um, there's a link to the county's plat system. So I can click on this and it takes me to the scanned TIFF image of the plat for that property. Um, it can tell me the revitalization area that it's in if it exists, as well as these other items, other items, excuse me. And then uh, these different links, for example, this takes you to the appraiser, Sedgwick County Appraiser's Office website and provides a, uh, information about the appraise, appraisal value and whatnot for that property. Um, I can link out to the district member's website to find out more about the district member for that area. And I can save this as either a digital report file save as and it's going to save as a pdf and then i can email that to somebody or what have you or i can just print it and have a hard copy of it but it date stamps when the report was generated and has our typical disclaimer as far as the accuracy of the data but yeah a pretty informative little report <clears throat> that uh i think has been become pretty popular the next tool that we're going to go over 
I'm going to close this dialog. And as you can see, it selected that parcel in the process of running the report. So I can close this and I can close my, let's see. So I'm going to zoom to another address real quick using my find tools. Didn't like that address. Let's see if this one will go. So I can zoom to another address. Um, maybe I don't like having the aerials on, so I can turn those off. Close my find address dialogs. And this next tool that we're going to go over is the crime search tool. So there's a couple of different ways to look at crime data that we provide. <clears throat> By default, the map theme that is set is for all available layers. But we also have created some map sets similar to what was in the previous application, kind of based on use. So if I wanted to go to the crime map set, it basically just provides these three different layers or, or map groups. We've got parcels, we've got the crimes, and then we've got parks, recreation stuff. So with my crime data turned on, you can see it's symbolized here on the map with these uh, small dots. And I can click on the crimes and look at the legend to see what the symbology actually equates to. So I can turn on all crimes, and this would be all crimes for the last 30 days. And we can uh, pan around the map. I can identify on a crime by clicking on it. can change it to table view and look at the information about it. I can change to the wide view so I can see the whole record. It's basically just a case of vandalism <clears throat> that occurred December 1st. Provides the, the beat information of what beat it was in. So that's one way to kind of investigate the crime data that we provide. Another way is to utilize the crime search report. Kind of similar to the property report, but just specific to crime. So I'm gonna move around to maybe a different part of town. Say I'm interested in 8429 West Birch Lane, this property right here. Click on the tool and the first thing that comes up again is this progress bar. As long as that progress bar is present, you just need to kind of be patient and know that the application is doing some work behind the scenes. Once the progress bar is complete, you get this dialog to choose the way that you can search for crimes. So I could do a location by point and click on the parcel that I was interested in. I can do by city council and select the city council boundary. Same thing with homeowners associations, neighborhood associations. I can choose a particular park and buffer around that park. I can choose a specific police beat if I know, for example, what police beat that I live in. Um, same thing with Wichita Public School. I can select a school and do a buffer around that or within a zip code boundary. I'll just demonstrate how to do location by point. So once I've figured out where, now I need to figure out what. So I can do all crimes or I can do any in any of the individual part one type crimes. 
So I'm going to just select all crimes for purposes of demonstration. And then I can also choose when. So I can do for the last 7, 14, 30, 60, or 90 days. Keep in mind, the, farther, the larger the time span, obviously the more results you're going to get. So I'm going to go with 30 days. I'm going to do all part one crimes. I'm going to do location by point. When I click on this, my progress bar reappears. So I need to be patient. As soon as the processing finishes, this comes up and tells me to click on the map. But when I click OK, the progress bar is going to reappear and I need to let that finish before I can click on the map. Otherwise, you'll click on the map a couple of different times and sometimes the tool will fail. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to wait for my progress bar to go away. You can see my cursor has changed. I was interested in this particular, let's see, 8429 West Birch Lane. I'm going to click on that parcel. So it's basically just taking that geographic point. Now I can choose how far out from that point I want to buffer. Uh, I can do 500, 1,000, all the way up to a mile. So I'll do a quarter mile buffer. I click OK. Progress bar reappears. You can see it draws the buffer. It zooms to that buffer, and it provides me a list of all the crimes. As I click on each one, it's going to zoom to it and highlight it. I can zoom to all. So within that quarter mile buffer, it looks like I have a small number of, of results. I can view this data in the wide view. I can change it to a list view in the wide view. I can change it to the tall view and view it as a list, or I can view it as a table. And so there's basically kind of four different ways that you can review the data. Don't forget, you can stretch this window out if you want to be able to see all of the fields. So I've got a pretty good list of crimes. So I know, you know, my time span and it tells me the different types of crime that have occurred. But let's say I wanted to keep a record of this. I can do that in a couple of different ways. I can export this result set to Excel through the CSV format. So I just find a place that I want to save it. And then I can browse to that file and open it up with Microsoft Excel. I can also create a report out of it. So once I have a result set from that tool, I can click on reports, select the crime report. The only format that we provide is PDF, so you can leave that drop down selection left alone. And then just hit run the report. And then it gives me a dialog box to download the report. Again, opening it up in a PDF. can maximize my window to review it. It groups it by category. I've got the incident reports, day of the week, day and time, the total number of incidents. So pretty nice and handy report, hopefully. The reporting capabilities in our new environment is much more robust than our previous. So uh, we hope to be creating additional functionality and reporting capabilities as time goes by and as requests um, occur. So I've got my result set here. Let's say I'm done. I can um, unselect all of them by clicking select none. I can close my dialog box. But as you can see, my graphic is still on the map. So to remove the graphic after this report runs, it requires that you go to the drawing tab and go to clear all drawings. And that will remove the buffer from that report tool. So that's the uh, property and report or property report and the crime search report tools. And like I mentioned, we are planning on having quite a few more reports created um, as time goes by and as upgrades occur. Thank you for your time.